All right, so I got this um, Billy Horn from Harbor Freight. I think it was less than 12 bucks. Um, not necessarily doing a review on this product. 135 dBs. Mostly what I want to accomplish is um, the wiring instructions. So this is what came with Harbor Freight. You have these, um, this paper or these instructions in the back. This uh, refers to wiring a negative ground. Um, go to the next one, wiring a positive ground. Obviously, I think most of our vehicles are wired in a negative ground scenario, so you would actually be applying this one. Now, there, you know, I did some other searches online and very difficult to understand this diagram. I just thought like, man, something just doesn't make sense uh, with this diagram. So basically with their relay, you have 86, 87, 85, and 30. What they're saying is that 86 goes to your uh, original horn positive side if you have a momentary switch that's gonna basically complete your ground which would complete the circuit and activate the horn uh, 30 is pretty self-explanatory that just basically goes to your battery to supply power and then 87 also self-explanatory too so the 87 and 30 weren't in question here what was in question though was 86 and 85 now i did some research i tried to find um you know different uh uh, references out there I found I came across one video that was actually pretty good but um, I don't know for me it didn't really explain too well what was going on so what I ended up doing was finding another product out there um, and just kind of like hybriding it so basically what ends up happening is is this um, here's the wiring diagram here so this doesn't mark the relays. I guess I could have done that for the video, but if you look at the top, that would be number 87, basically going to your compressor. If you see that that gray one there with the with the horn switch, that's your ground. That is 85. As you can see, 30 here goes to your battery, and that is jumped to what is 86 here. So this right here is I want to say these instructions are wrong on, on so many levels as if you did want your original horn switch in your, uh, you know, in your vehicle, in your steering wheel to activate the air horn, well then you're actually not even going to put this switch here. This is just going to be a ground. It's not even going to be broken. Uh, there's not going to be a switch here as this is going to be what activates your air horn. But you know, I'm, I want my, horn to be independent from my original car vehicle horn. I, I actually went and bought a momentary switch here. Uh, so I want it to be isolated because I don't want to always have to use the air horn with that being, you know, with that being the case, you know, maybe you just want to use your regular, you know, factory car horn. Um, and maybe there's an old lady and you don't, you know, somebody's backing out and you don't want to use the air horn. So that's why I wanted to be independent. So with that being said, in, the, in these instructions, just totally disregard this. I mean, they could have totally worded this different. Um, I think the consensus is that these instructions pretty much suck. Um, so, as you can see, what we are going to do is we're going to jump 86 to 30. Those are going to be jumped. 85 is going to be my momentary switch, which is going to complete the circuit. It's basically just going to complete the ground, which is going to close the circuit and allow the compressor to operate. Um, and uh, 87, you know, uh, obviously is going to go to the compressor. So, you know, it's kind of crazy real, thinking like, do I, you know, how do I troubleshoot this? Do I sit here and um, do it on my vehicle and cause problems? So I don't know. I'm not quite sure what to do. All right, my friends. What we're going to do is just wire it up right here. It's going to sound like a party. So, uh, as I explained how we're going to actually use the relay, I can also get some more information for you on these momentary switches because this also came in the mail without instructions, uh, let alone bad ones. So I have some troubleshooting to do on this because 
my DIY skills are about three to four out of 10. Well, two when it comes to electricity. So um, I've got to do some troubleshooting too before I can continue with that. All right, folks, I think we got it. So this little light probe is simulating that it's the air compressor. I've got everything wired in here. Um, I've got some jumpers going here. Try not to allow that. Try not to let that confuse you. I'll explain that with a schematic at the end. So everything is wired in the way it, it would be. I would normally prefer to have my switch LED light on all the time. Um, so that's the, how I have it wired. But here we go. Hit the button. Probe goes on. And here we go for the uh, sake of running the test. I gotta hold the, uh, the compressor down, but here we go. There it is. All right, so here we go. We'll go ahead and close out the video. I hope it made it uh, a little bit easier for you guys. Um, I've got it off the air compressor again. Don't have the positive lead into the switch, which is why the LED isn't back on. So um, I know I haven't found any, like I said, I haven't found any information online that um, gives any good information for this. Uh, so here, you know, here's the wiring and if you need to pause it and make note of where every lead goes, that should work out for you. So, uh, ha, just kidding. So there's no way that's going to happen. So here's a, here's, the, here's the schematic, uh, that we have here. This is going to be the relay. Um, so you got your relay. 87 is going to be the power source for your air compressor. So you want to put that on the plus side of your air compressor. Of course, your air compressor is going to also have to be grounded um, into the frame. Uh, 85, that's going to be your that's going to be the relay's ground. That's going to go into the C portion of the momentary switch. I'll get that to, to the C portion on the next page. Number 30 will be jumped to number 86. For example. Omit that off the instructions. Forget it. It, it, it. Again, that's if you're going to make your flood, I'm sorry, your uh, horn independent from your car horn, which is what I would recommend, but that's up to you. So, 30 is jumped to 86. 30 will then come to your 30 amp fuse and then go into the positive side of your battery. All right. So, that's going to be the wiring uh, schematic for the relay. Now here's your momentary switch. Now keep in mind with these notes here, this, let's just go ahead and say, uh, well, a momentary switch that didn't have a built-in LED would not have five poles. I believe it would only have three. The poles are basically for the ground, negative, and then plus, you know, going out on a limb here again, my D DIY electricity is about two, um, but generally that's gonna be for your LEDs. So let's say you have a momentary switch that does not have a built-in LED. I can tell you that you're gonna have at least an NO or a C. NC would be normally closed, normally open, contact, negative and positive, obviously. So contact, that's where your contact, that's where it's, you hit that switch and it makes contact. Since it's a horn, we want that circuit to be normally open. If it was normally closed, if we put, if we put this same wire to the normally closed, well then that horn would be on all the time until you hit the button, it would turn the horn off. So we want it on the normally open. We want that circuit to be normally open when we hit the momentary switch that engages the contact and closes the circuit, basically putting your horn on. So this is, this is what you got here with a momentary switch that has LEDs built in, or not built in. Now we have a momentary switch with LEDs always on. So this is when your LED in the switch is always on. Now there's a way to wire it to where the LED in the switch only comes on when you press it. How, I don't know. I tried to figure that out. I know there's a way. Uh, some people are gonna look at these schematics and say, no, Jeff, that's wrong. You gotta remember, this momentary switch that we're utilizing here it hypothetically has the ability to act as a relay. It can actually take up to, I think, three amps if it needed to be. But remember for the sake of understanding this, elect this electrical diagram, that the momentary switch is actually only being used to complete the ground. That's all that's happening here. 
That's how you're engaging the horn is by hitting the switch and completing the ground portion of the schematic. So with that being said, if that wasn't the case, well, there would probably be a positive element in here somehow. So with the LED switch always on, you're going to go from the end from normally open pole. You're going to jump that to the negative, jump those together. Then you're going to take your contact portion of your pole and that's going to go, that's going to come from or go to the number 85 uh, side of the relay. Now that's not going to give you your led on. You have to have some type of power source now going to this positive pole to give you your led. So your led would stay on all the time. You hit the button, it would continue to stay on, but it would gauge the horn. And that's pretty much it. What I'm hoping to do is find, uh, I know that the truck that I'm putting this in, they had wired some fog lights into the headlight switch. So I'm going to try to find the power supply in that headlight switch. And I'd like to run that power to this positive side. Uh, with that being said, the LED will only come on when I'm utilizing my headlight switch, which would be ideal. Don't necessarily need that LED on during the day. I put a note down here. Um, do not need to utilize LED on switch. So if you do have a five pole uh, switch with a built in LED, you don't need to use it. You can just use this configuration here if you only wanted to use the switch function on the uh, switch. So that pretty much closes out anything that we could possibly talk about. Um, here's an example of the jump on the switch, which is basically going from, uh, well, this configuration, I have it from the contact to the negative. And then I have 85 going to the normally open, which also works. And if I were to put the positive side here to, from the battery power supply, that LED would also stay on. So that's another option, but for the sake of keeping it with the, it basically does the same function. So anyways, um, hope this tends to clear up a lot of the confusion out there. Um, good luck. Uh, one last side note. Um, Again, this is a Harbor Freight uh, air horn. If you wanted my recommendation, and I guess this would be a product review, is don't buy this one. Don't go through all this wiring, um, all this headache, do everything. First of all, this small horn was broken pretty much right out of the package. Basically, if I, I it separates from here, but I'm going to super glue that. Um, also... Just minor, that's little plastic molding, which is probably irrelevant, is coming apart. You know, it's 135 dB. Spend an extra 15 bucks, get a better quality 150 dB if you're going to go through all this hassle. Also, the relay. This is the relay that came with the Harbor Freight product. This blue, this went to crap. Probably within the first five applications of the momentary switch. I happen to have my own relay laying around. So obviously I'll, I'm going to use that one. It's a little bit better quality. So if you do have to use the Harbor Freight air hose, air horse or air hose, get yourself a better relay. Cause once you go through all that wiring, you know, again, if it does blow, all you have to do is replace it, remove a screw and then replug in your spades. But I would spend an extra, you know, a few extra dollars and get a better, Get a better air, ho air uh, horn if you can. So, all right, guys. Thanks for uh, watching the video.